Hello, so uh, this is 8Python and we are doing the final presentation for 8Python. Uh, so introduction to 8Python. 8Python's uh, mission is to basically design tools to help uh, better integrate uh, both the software side and the hardware side of Ag uh software as well as uh, Aga Clara's uh, uh, plants. And we want to do this uh, to make uh, a better documentation report and make uh, ease of access of understanding how uh, the performance of uh, the water treatment plant is. And uh, we have some core tenants that we tr uh, try to uh, adhere to every, uh, in all the projects that we do, which includes universal access for uh, everyone who uses the software by developing uh, and supporting uh, the software in multiple uh, different languages, such as English and Spanish. We also want to ensure the ease of accessibility of the software that we develop. And we want to make sure that even though if people don't understand Python or have a uh, minimal coding experience, that they are still able to use uh, the Agua Clara water treatment plant and build them without uh, need to understand the code and the uh, software that goes behind it. And finally, we want to ensure that there's a user experience and interface that uh, uh, allows that uh, allows anyone who uh, allows anyone to have a seamless experience on the platforms that we make. Yeah, so we have um, like three major tasks that we've been working on this semester, going into next semester as well. Um, the first major task is the A design specs. Um, and for us, that involves, we have many different report types and we are trying, uh, not all of them support all languages or file types. And so our issue this semester was working through limiting those languages and file types, depending on the report. Uh, the next major task that we worked on was aid validation, which uh, involves uh, making sure that the reports generated are uh, and uh, the R-shape uh, CAD models that we generate are uh, a valid representation of the, uh, and do adhere to the same calculations that are, uh, are calculated based on the Algoclara's in-house made uh, software. And this semester, we uh, made sure to make minor improvements to the PDF generation, including adding graphs and uh, uh, to linearity and uh, showing uh, during PDF generation how certain uh, aspects looks. And uh, we're, we are also adding Spanish support for reports, which we will uh, upload in the future uh, Git push. Uh, for future semesters, as well as the end of this semester, we were working on aid configuration, which is a new project which allows uh, JSONs to be modified from and uh, attributes changed to output a JSON template. And uh, this is going to be important because we want uh, to work with Onshape and uh, Onshape has a lot of JSON inputs and outputs and we want to ensure that our template, uh, we can uh, work with a certain template. And uh, we will discuss this uh, in, uh, uh, in the following slides. As we said before, we wanted to, as you can see below, um, there's like a language option and a file option. And we essentially, based on what the language the user selects, we want to limit the different types of files that they can download because there are only a certain amount of like different files available for like each language. Um, <clears throat> some of the current, so some of the current problems is like, it's kind of hard to debug because there's a lot of code that we still have to go through and like find the best solution without like changing up too much of the code and trying to integrate it into it. Um, the best solution that we've come up with is to essentially create a conditional form using JavaScript and then implementing it into like Django, which is what we have built the website on. It's just, that's currently a little difficult as we don't have too much knowledge in that field. And also the server is not working on Raha's laptop. So 
there might be also something wrong with her laptop or the repo itself that we should are trying to fix. Um, yep, I would bet that it has something to do with my laptop, but yes, I would like to fix that in the near future. Um, so our goal and our plan is to continue working on this issue by familiar, familiarizing ourselves with JavaScript and Django. And JavaScript is a front end language and Django is a high level Python framework that allows for the creation of web applications. So both of these things, as David mentioned, um, we're not very familiar with or have a lot of knowledge on. And so we are gonna continue learning more about them and continue with research on how to best implement this fix. Um, and that research includes talking to people who are more familiar with web design and JavaScript and also learning about in integrating JavaScript with Python and a little bit more about like how to use Django to do all those. So the other side of the uh, sub team worked on the aid validation. So a little background uh, for aid validation. Aid validation was created in fall 2020 as a way to isolate a specific feature uh, of aid design specs to be developed separately. And we wanted to uh, basically create a way to verify on shape designs to be accurate with uh, the calculations uh, and inputs cal uh, and with, with uh, cal calculated with the inputs on to on shape and uh, which we then proceeded to calculate using Agoclara's in-house made software. And part of this was basically uh, having this Onshape CAD passed into the software that we had. And uh, based on uh, the design specs, uh, aid validation was going to be uh, verifying that the measurements were correct, uh, uh, returning that as part of the document generated by aid design specs. Our goal uh, in the future is to uh, integrate uh, aid validation back into aid design specs when we uh, when both are fully completed, and uh, to release the software as a document generator uh, for those working with the onshape CADs and building uh, the wild treatment plants. Okay, here comes to the uh, structure of validation. So basically it contains four parts. Um, part of it is a separate components files that we can check on separate components of, of the infrastructure like segmentation, alpha and flocculation and stuff. And also there's validator and also report writer and link input. So for um, in the bottom layer, there is the detailed calculations occurs. So um, there are details functions about each components um, and then it will interact with the report better to generate some messages. And then um, for the validator, it's a central part. It's orchestrates um, validation of agricultural plant. It interacts with every other components in this fall and um, it serves to validate if agricultural component or plant model at a given onshape URL is correct. And it will interact with the link input file, which would um, create like a little GUI window where we can input an onshape link to check the inputs. So next I'm going to demo how it works. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, so so this is how does it look? So first I will run the link input file. And then there will be a GUI window generated at the top. And here we want to put an unshape in URL and click on validate unshape URL. And then there should be a PDF generated, which is this one. Then we will open it. Yeah, 
then we get the report we want. And that's it. So the next thing that we've started working on and is work for future semesters is what is called aid configuration. Essentially, um, it's like creating it using React and JavaScript. Um, like a user will be able to put in a JSON string straight off of Onshape. And then I've started writing the JavaScript code to essentially parse the JSON and turn it into like what is called a JSON schema or a JSON template, which then allows the user to like modify different attributes inside of the JSON itself. So then they can like configure the different variables that they want. And then they will also get a new JSON in return after they've configured all of that. So, uh... David just explained how we're gonna use the backend and uh, how a configuration is gonna work in the backend. But for the front end, we are thinking of designing a, basically a, a interface using uh, React. And uh, we are basically having three different columns. In this case, uh, one of the columns is gonna be the input JSON as seen here. And then we're gonna have another column where we have each individual attribute separated and uh, changeable uh, once the JSON input has been inputted. And finally, uh, after the input, uh, the J attributes have been changed or haven't been, depending on the user's preferences, uh, a JSON schema will be generated and uh, as, a, uh, as a JSON and be returned back to the user. And uh, based off that, we're just basically building this off of React and JavaScript. And uh, yeah. So if there's any other questions or recommendations for us, please reach out to us at the following uh, email addresses. And thank you for so much for uh, watching our uh, final presentation for Spring 2021 AIDS uh, Python. <laughs>